So the first technology we're going to look at is solar thermal. Uh, solar thermal redu uh, produces uh, heat through radiation. So if you go out and you can feel the sun on your face and you're getting a tan, then solar thermal will be working. If you go out on a cloudy day and you're not getting a tan, it's probably not going to be doing very much. If you go out at night, it's doing absolutely nothing. Okay? So it's all about radiation. If you can feel the sun, then solar thermal will heat the water. No sun, no heat. During the summer months, if it's done properly, you can get free heating. The only small problem with that is, of course, during the summer months, you don't really need that much heat. So all it can really contribute for is your hot water. Solar thermal, contrary to what the salespeople might tell you, does very, very, very little in the winter. On a nice February day, you might get a surprising amount out of it, but they are rare days, and through 90% of the winter months, you will get no discernible benefit from solar thermal, even if you're using it to heat underfloor heating. And the reason for that is that to get anything at all, you're going to need at least 35 degrees of temperature uh, times the amount of kilowatt hours that you need to heat your underfloor heating. There is not generally that amount of energy available in the sun in the winter in this part of the world. However, for two or three hours a day when the sun's out, you might be able to get something that contributes a little bit. Because I don't think you're going to heat your house through the winter a bit. That's the bad news about solar thermal. The good news is, is that this year, the government are about to start bringing out some grants. And we'll talk through this uh, um, presentation about the subsidies, because the truth is that without subsidies, many of these technologies aren't cost justifiable. The government recognizes that, and because of that, they are beginning to bring out various types of grants and subsidies. And one of those is called the Renewable Heat Incentive. And the Renewable Heat Incentive will basically pay you for each kilowatt of energy that you generate. A little bit like it does with the photovoltaic cells at the moment, I'm sure you've all seen the adverts and been called by representatives on the telephone, etc, etc. This is going to do the same thing for heat that currently happens for generating electricity. And at the moment, as we sit here today, the planned subsidy for hot water is 17.3 pence per kilowatt hour. Now, to give you an idea of the value of that cost, if you are running your gas boiler at the moment, it's probably costing you about four pence per kilowatt hour to heat hot water. If you're using oil, it's probably costing you seven or eight pence per kilowatt hour to heat hot water. So this subsidy will pay you 17 pence per kilowatt hour. In other words, it's extremely generous. Probably too generous. So it's probably too good to be true. So you better take it with a pinch of salt and see what actually happens over the next three or four months. But this is what the government is currently proposing. If this comes in, then even though you only get a relatively small pay, uh, amount of energy from it, it will have a payback of around three to five years if you're replacing oil, or because gas is half the price of oil, five to 12 years if you're replacing gas. If you're in a listed building, you've of course got to speak to your conservation officer before you start replacing the roof with solar panels. Uh, if you have a flat roof and it's not shaded badly by chimneys, etc., you can often put them flat on the roof and they can't be seen. And then most conservation officers have no problem with that at all, as long as you don't actually penetrate the roof. Finally, on solar thermal, the biggest, biggest problem with solar thermal is that it is not normally installed properly. And the reason I say that is that if you go out to some of the companies that leaflet you, etc., you'll find that what they're often doing is just putting a coil into a hot water tank. The problem with that is that your gas boiler or your oil-fired boiler fires up, heats up the tank at 6 o'clock in the morning. At 10 o'clock in the morning, the sun comes out, but the hot water tank's already full of hot water. So there's actually nothing for the sun to do. If you're going to do solar thermal properly, you have to have at least two tanks. One, to preheat the cold water coming in, so that as cold water comes in, you're raising it from 8 degrees to whatever you possibly can, anything up to 60 or 70 or 80. Uh, or, and or, you have a diverter valve that if there is available energy in the sun and you're heating your underfloor, heating your radiators, if the temperature is high enough, it will divert to do that. The problem with that is that those sort of installations take up a lot more space than putting another coil into a hot water tank and costs 
five times as much. So not many people will sell you that solution. So solar thermal, in the right place, it can be quite good. With the government grants, it is probably worthwhile looking into. Um, 